Okay, so today I'm going to be starting out with, I'm going to use this brush pin. And the reason I'm going to use this brush pin is just so on the video you guys will be able to see it very clearly. But obviously you're going to want to do the, these methods with pencil and very light lines. These are the first lines of your drawing, so you need to make them very light. But like I said, I'm going to use this brush pin so that you can just you'll be able to see very clearly the lines in this video. Let's talk about the first method. And the reason we have these different methods is so that you can kind of determine which one is going to work best for you. And uh, you'll be able to draw them, hopefully be able to draw more efficiently portraits that you like. So this first method is just starting out with a circle. So no matter which way your portrait is facing, you know, whether it's up, down, left, right, whatever the view of the portrait is, just start out with a circle, right? And like I said, you're gonna be doing this with like a pencil. So I'm doing this just so you can clearly see what the lines, you know, if I was doing this with a pencil, you know, it'd be very light. You guys would really, it's kind of, you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing, but basically you start out with a circle like this. Okay, so you have a nice circle. Keep your lines very light. Doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you can be sketchy in this stage. Okay, so now that we have this circle, the next thing to do is to figure out which way your portrait's facing. You know, if, you, if you're doing like a profile view, like from the side, if you're looking from the side, you know, the finding the line of the face, the midlines of the face is going to be this way. You know, the nose will be sticking out over here somewhere, etc. So this is kind of the... Now you're going to be using a reference, right? So we're using references, we're drawing from photos, we're drawing from life. So this, we're going to draw the center line of the face where the nose is, right? That's what I'm talking about. So if it's facing off to the side a little bit, then it's going to be facing down this way, right? And then you kind of build, using your reference photo as a guide, you build the shape of the face, right? Down to the chin. Something like that. Eventually, basically, it's probably more like this, actually. Um, <clears throat> doesn't really matter, right? This, we're just getting the idea, the concept here, that we're starting out with a circle, and then whatever way your portrait's facing, this is gonna determine it, this middle center line. You know, now we build the rest of the face from it very quickly, okay? So starting out with this circle, and then when you start building the facial features and, and that kind of stuff, use just lines to begin with. You know, be very simple about it. There's a line for the eyes, there's a line for the nose, there's a line for the mouth, maybe the ears are out here somewhere. And by starting out with these simple lines, now take your time with this, take your time, try to get it, the proportions as close as you can, right? Take your time, don't do it as quick as I am. I'm just showing you concepts. So you know, the ear is here, the eyes, or eyebrow, you know, the eyes in there somewhere, the mouth. <clears throat> but just by starting out with lines, if something's in the wrong spot, it's very easy to just adjust that. Like, okay, maybe the eyes need to be moved down a little bit. And then you can start figuring out where the eyes placed. You, know, you can start figuring out the edges of the nose, edges of the mouth. You, know, you can start building things slowly. But to begin with, start out with just simple lines. And remember, keep this stuff very light with a pencil, okay? So draw this with a pencil, be very light with everything. I'm just using this pen just so you can see it very, very clearly. So this is the first method, using a circle with just lines. Very basic, very simple. Use this center line to determine where your portrait's facing, okay? You know, the line of the eyes will also determine where it's facing. So one more quick one is if, let's say, your portrait's looking up for some reason. Well, the line of the eyes might be way up here. And maybe your center line comes down like this. You know, maybe you're looking at the bottom of the chin here. Chin's right there. You know, so it just depends. You know, nose here, mouth here. So this, these two lines, kind of the line of the eye or the line of the features mixed with this center line, that's going to tell you where your portrait is facing. So just use a simple circle there, and you can always adjust this later on. Maybe it's too tall, you can kind of adjust it, etc. But starting out with that simple circle, that's a good method. So method number two 
is starting out with using only straight lines. So instead of using that circle method, we can start out with just straight lines. And remember, everything we're doing here is drawing very lightly. So there's the top of the head, maybe the sides, maybe it will determine. And you wanna draw these long lines long. You wanna determine the angles. You know, be very basic about it, be very simple. Okay, the sides of the head, maybe they come down like this. You know, you're basically placing like placing sticks on the outside of your of your portrait, um, placing it around and seeing the angle. You know, here's the angle of the chin coming down or the jawline, and then the bottom of the chin. This method's very difficult, but the more you do it, the better you'll become. And to, what the way to make things rounded um, is to put more lines, so intersecting lines, cutting off the corners here you're going to end up rounding things. You know, you can very easily adjust. And when you're doing with this pencil and you make it very light, you can go back, you'll er all these guidelines will basically disappear and you'll erase them. You know, it'll be very easy to erase them. But um, using these straight lines, it's very easy to correct things. So like if I draw, drew the line of this jaw incorrectly, I can just fix it and then erase the old one. You know, if it needs to come up more, I can fix it. You know, I can, I can correct anything here. So using straight lines is, is a good way to determine angles. Because sometimes if you're just trying to draw curves, you know, if you're just going on the outside of the portrait and you're drawing all these curved lines, you know, here's the jaw line. Everything's curved. It's very difficult to, to determine the angle. Like what angle is it facing at? What angle, you know, what is the angle of that jaw? So... Sometimes it's easier to just draw a few straight lines like this. And then now, you know, you can kind of start correcting things like, okay, maybe this needs to come out a little bit more. This needs to come down a little bit more straight, you know, cut this corner off. Maybe this needs to move up. You know, you can start really modifying and fixing things and then get that roundness as the drawing progresses. But you know, the reason we have these different methods for starting is that so you'll feel confident. You feel confident going into your drawing the rest of the, the drawing. You know, you need a strong foundation at the beginning of your drawing. And uh, these different methods will hopefully help you. And the same thing here with the features. You know, just start out blocking things in. Very simple lines. Here's a line for the eyes, the bottom of the nose, the mouth. You can eventually start blocking in sides of the nose, sides of the eyes, the middle of the eyes. You know, keep everything really straight, all straight lines, blocky, just lightly block everything in. And uh, eventually as the drawing progresses, as I, as I said, the more lines you keep adding and you keep intersecting, you know, the more you, you, you keep intersecting these corners like this, you create a curve naturally, it just happens. So that's the second method that I find very helpful. This is a very, useful method for me personally. All right, so the third the third method is to use a cube. So this is this is interesting and I think it's probably most helpful for like three quarter views, you know, when your portrait's facing uh, diagonally like off to the side. So if you can draw a cube, you know, it helps with perspective as well. And it helps probably with facial features, you know, because now you realize it. So if you draw a cube like this, and just imagine this being a head, right? So let's say like this is the front of the face, this is the side where the ears are, the top of the head. So imagine a sphere kind of, or face shape. You know, yeah, you can draw a circle in this thing, but the face kind of fits within this cube. But what it does is now it, you have this line here and this line for the cube. And that really gives you the perspective for like the eyes, the nose, all the, all the features are going to fit on that same parallel, you know, and you have the ear over here somewhere. Like I said, use reference photos, use reference photos. You always have to have a reference. It's very important, but this one's a little bit more challenging. You know, if you're, if you're new to drawing, this one might be very difficult for you to try out. Uh, but just play around with drawing cues. So, sometimes just having a simple guide like that if you're having trouble draw a cube around the head you know and just try to figure out and depending on the head shape you know you're gonna have different cube shapes you know my head in particular it's, it seems more 
long, you know, so maybe I have like kind of something like this and then the head, my head's not very wide. You know, you're going to get different like face shapes, right? Longer faces, fatter face, you know, I'm oh, sorry guys. So, you know, it's more long. Um, so this, this can be very helpful for doing these different views and you can play around, just start turning different angles. Just play around with drawing cubes at different, different angles, you know. I keep drawing the same angle. <laughs> Here, let's draw a different angle. Draw like this, you know, have it face the other way. So this is like the side of the, you know, the ear over here. But you know, you can have it really face any direction, up, down, rough, right. The cube is just, it's a way to structure the head to, to really know, really show which way is it facing. So this is one I don't really use too often to be honest, but um, the cool thing about, like I said at the very beginning of this video, is, is you could use these for anything you're drawing. So if it's like, imagine you're drawing like the body of an animal, you know, and you're struggling with it. You could just draw a big, you could draw like a cube shape to kind of figure out like, you know, if you're drawing a, a bear or something, you know, here's the body kind of can fit into this cube and have its head stick out or something. But basically the idea is like, you know, you can have a cube as the structure. It gives the depth, it gives the height, you know, it has the depth here, you know, the height, the width. So you're having, it's a three dimensional shape. So you're actually working in like three dimensions uh, when you deal with this, you know, and you can also make the head cube as well. And you know, it's going to be at a similar perspective as the body if it's facing straight ahead, of course. So this thing, this can be very helpful for just building things very quickly, getting a structure down and then kind of rounding, almost like you're sculpting the form, you know, out of a block of clay or something, you know, cut off the corners. So the fourth method, I don't really recommend this one, but I wanted to, to mention it anyway, because maybe it'll be useful for some of you guys. Um, and some of you probably done this one, but if you're a beginner, it's really not suggested to try this one, but it's basically starting out with the facial features just by drawing little marks for the eyes and then trying to figure out from there, where's the edge of the nose, maybe the bottom of the nose and then the mouth sides of the nose, side of the mouth. And then building, once you have the eye shapes in here, you know, okay, top of the eyes. And you're basically drawing all these little marks, but what it's gonna, this is determining the outer limits of like the eye. You get, you'll eventually start connecting the shape, creating the eyes, and then go to the eyebrows above that. You know, it is it, it can be a useful method for some, subjects, you know, that are very, that can be challenging. And then from the eyes, you can figure out, okay, sides of the head and then the ears. The only problem with this method, you know, bottom of the mouth there, the chin. <laughs> the funny thing is I'm building something that looks, it's almost looking very realistic here just by drawing these little dashes and lines very quickly. But you guys start to see a face. You start to see, okay, the sides of the head here down to the chin or whatever. And we could build this. Now, the only problem is, see how large I made this, this portrait on the whole paper? Uh, it's, it's challenging to really determine the overall size. That's something I struggle with, you know, with this kind of method. So play around with this. Maybe this is a method that works for you. For me, it, it doesn't really work that much. Uh, I'm, I'm more of someone who's gonna determine the overall size first. So if I wanted to draw this type of head, I would try to, you know, draw straight lines and determine the overall size that I want. Okay, here's the size of the head I want. Now I can start modifying it, you know, and then start figuring out, once I got the overall shape and I'm happy with it, I can start figuring out where the eyes, okay, where the eyes in here, the bottom of the nose, mouth, bottom of the mouth, stuff like that. But this could be a method that you enjoy. Maybe it's better for you to figure out um, the features first. And the reason it's sometimes easy to figure out the features first is because the measurements are a lot smaller. So it's easy, it's easier for us to measure small distances compared to much larger distances. So sometimes figuring out the, the whole size of the head can be difficult, but if you just figure out, you know, the size of the eye, 
you know, okay, we're going to make the eye this big. And then now you know to just copy that for the other eye and figure out the spacing between them. So now you can start figuring out, okay, since you have those measurements, how far away is the nose from that? Maybe the bottom of the nose is here and then the, bo and then the mouth, bottom of the mouth. And you start figuring out these small measurements first and then go to larger measurements. You know, the eyebrows up here, sides of the nose, sides of the mouth. And already you're getting these like proportions built into your face, you know, the sides of the head, bottom of the head, the chin, top of the head. But it's, it's hard to figure out the entirety, you know, how big is your head going to end up being when you draw the eyes this big. So it's, if you're not concerned about that, then don't worry about it and just try this method, play around with it. But it's a, it can be fun. It's definitely fun to play around with. Like I said, you know, these methods is just trying to figure out which one works for you and you have to just go with your gut and try to figure it out. But, um, okay, so let's get to the fifth method. So the fifth method is using a grid. This one's a bit challenging because it's going to be challenging for me to demonstrate. So imagine, let's say you have a reference photo that you printed out. Maybe it's from a book or a magazine or whatever it is. You can do this on the computer as well, but some people may not have the ability to do this on the computer. So imagine you have your reference photo, right? So let's say this is your reference photo. Like maybe it's like an eight by 10 photo that you have printed out. You know, maybe this, it's an eight by 10. And you know, here's the reference, some kind of portrait. Imagine this is like a photo, right? A photo of me or something. Here's a portrait. Draw something quickly. Woo, that's creepy. So there we go, right? There's our reference photo. Now we wanna draw this reference photo. So this is what we wanna draw, right? Uh, and here, maybe here's our, so maybe our, our printed photo is kind of small. You know, maybe it's a five by seven actually. It could be five by seven. So maybe it's like a small photo, but we want to draw our reference photo on a sheet of paper. We want to draw it larger or smaller. You know, it doesn't really matter, but let's say we want to draw it large, right? You know, our sheet of paper is a bit bigger. So one thing you can do is with lightly with a pencil, everything that I'm doing in this video, you do lightly with a pencil. On your actual reference photo, get a ruler out and draw a grid. So first determine the center line. So do some measuring with your ruler. Determine a center line and draw that vertically and do it horizontally as well. So now you have a, a big, large grid on your photograph. Now what you can do is find the center line of those four boxes. So find the center lines here you know, pretty much everywhere for each box. And then you can draw lines in the center of those. And you can do this as many times as you want, right? You can make the squares as small as you want. You can make them just one inch squares. You can have just one inch or one centimeter or two centimeter square inches. The, th the thing, you wanna draw the exact same proportional grid on your paper. So this method's a little more drawn out, but um, I want to make a video on this in the future a little bit more in depth because I have a very interesting method I think for learning to draw using a grid. So you're going to find if your paper, you want to make sure your paper is the exact same proportion as your photo. So if it is the same proportion, then you can just do the same thing because your grid's going to end up being the same squares. So my point is if you draw a one inch square grid on your reference photo of one inch squares, you want to draw squares on your your paper. So imagine you have squares here. These are all squares on your reference photo. Okay. You're going to want to do the same thing here. They want them all to be squares. So I'm just doing this real quickly. So imagine it's the same grid, right? And then what you do is you just draw it square by square. You just match up the squares, you know? So let's try to do this the same way, I guess. We'll make it smaller. Now imagine this is, you're going to be very precise about this, right? You're going to get your ruler. You're going to get your ruler out and you're going to draw really straight lines, measure them out. And you're going to want them to be really good, really perfect, right? Take your time. So that's what you're going to do for the whole page. It's going to be a perfect grid and the same exact grid on your reference photo. And then you just draw, fill it in square by square and you draw, you can just line it up. Okay. The top of his head is here in this square up here. Then the next square. Okay. It's going over like this. And once you just draw square by square, okay, his smile is down here somewhere. 
And then the next square goes like this. By the time, once you get done, you'll have a, the exact same thing pretty much if you, if you were accurate inside each little square, right? So that's kind of the method here of using a grid. You know, there's many videos out there on this and I wanna make one myself using a grid. Um, so that's just the concept. That's just the concept. Uh, it's not one I really recommend, but maybe for beginners, it'll be useful to you. It'll give you confidence. And uh, you start judging these smaller distances, it's gonna help you in the long run, I think. So the sixth and final method, it's not really a method in and of itself. It's something I kind of do personally. It's basically going with your gut and using a combination of all the other five methods. Um, so for me, I will normally use kind of a, a combination of the first and second method. You know, sometimes I'll start out with a circle with anything I'm drawing, right? Maybe circles, or you could start out with squares or certain kind of shapes. What, whatever fits your subject the best, right? Just simple shapes and then build straight lines off of those shapes. So I personally like to use method number two using just only straight lines, but sometimes I will draw more intuitively. Like if I feel like I don't need straight lines, I can just go straight in with the curves and stuff. Sometimes I'll do that first. And then if I'm having trouble with whatever I'm drawing, whatever I'm trying to draw, whether it's an animal or something, I like to draw animals a lot. If I'm having trouble with some of the curves and some of the angles, I'll go back in and try to correct myself. I'll try to correct it with straight lines. Like, okay, maybe this needs to be more like that. I'll try to fix these angles and stuff. And then maybe, you know, then I'll start building off of that. Like, okay, feel pretty good. Uh, and then maybe sometimes I'll start building inside, you know, using the facial features one where I start building inside the, whatever it is, I don't know what I'm drawing here, but imagine it's some kind of animal. I'll start drawing like some of the facial features or arms or stuff on it. And then using those measurements, I can line up like, okay, it's eye over here. It lines up with this mark. So I know that for sure. And then this, his eye lines up with the ear on the top. Uh, you know, whatever. So I just, I, I go with my gut and I just, I be intuitive about it. You know, I'm very intuitive with the way that I draw and the methods that I use, but I basically use a combination of all the methods I just shown you. So I really encourage you to try a bunch of different methods, you know, starting out with simple shapes or using just straight lines only, starting out with the facial features or, or any little marks like that uh, on the inside of the object you know, doing these kinds of, of methods uh, and just trying these different kinds of processes is gonna help you understand like what you gravitate towards, what really works for you. Eventually you'll, you'll just be intuitive about it and you'll just go with your gut, you'll just do what works. That's kind of what this is all about, like using these different methods for drawing. Uh, you'll end up kind of developing your own method, your own intuitive kind of method and figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you, what you don't really like, what you do like. And maybe you can come up with a new method uh, that you that I didn't mention here. You know, maybe there's something different that I didn't even mention. Um, you know, these aren't all the, all the methods out there. This is just a few that I know and that I've used personally. So hope this helped you out, guys. Let me know down below what you think. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.